Hey guys, um, I'm going to show you in this video how you can paint directly on objects that you make in Blender. Um, it can seem kind of tricky when you're coloring things in your Blender projects because usually you can only put one color or one material uh, on a basic object like this. Um, but sometimes you might want to actually hand draw some elements onto your model. And for that, there's a special window in Blender called Texture Paint. You can find it right up here in the top corner of your screen. So this is, you know, our basic cube light and camera setup. I'm going to get rid of the camera and the light, and we're just going to work on this cube right here. Okay. So to start painting, I'm going to go up to the texture paint tab. And as soon as I click that, you'll see it splits my screen down the middle so that I have one window showing my cube and the other window shows the cube unwrapped almost like it's a paper box that's been unfolded and laid flat. We call this the UV map, and it's a way that lets you see each of the sides of the shape that you're working on so you know where you're going to paint. You can also tell that my um, cube does not have any material on it right now because it's that bright neon pink which tells us there's no material. So before I can do any painting, I gotta give this thing a material. To do that, in this window, I'm going to go up to the texture slots right here at the top of the screen and I'll open it up and right now it has no texture. Let's change that by clicking plus and we're going to give it a base color. Okay. By default, this base color will just be plain white. You can change it to anything you want if you know you're painting something that needs to be gray or brown or black, whatever. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that. You can also change its dimensions if you need more pixels, but this looks like it's going to be plenty for us. I am going to uncheck this alpha box because I don't want my material to be transparent. Now let's click add. And if I zoom out over here, you can see that it's put in a white piece of paper behind my unfolded box. So now I have a piece of paper I can actually paint on top of. All right. So in order to see what I'm painting, we need to switch to a mode where we can view our materials. And, you know, normally we're working in solid view or material view or rendered view. We need to be in material view in order to see what we're painting as we work. Okay. So I've got my cube zoomed in. I'm going to come over here and let's start drawing. Now you can see that there's some different tools. I'm just using the basic brush. And when I have that brush selected, over on this side of the screen, you'll see your color picker. So let's pick uh, like a bright red right here. I can change the size of the brush and the strength of the brush. And I can use this to paint right onto the surface of my cube, okay? So I'm gonna just fill this square in by painting. And when I let go, boom, it shows up on my cube. And you can see I can look at this from any angle, okay? Let's figure out which sides are which here. We're going to fill in the top. We'll do that one red. Okay. And that is that side over there. Let's pick a yellow color. And I think this is our top of the cube. You notice it doesn't matter if I go outside the lines because it's only going to show what's on that face. So even if I cross over, uh, it's not going to go outside. And then let's try this one. We'll put some yellow in here as well. There's my top surface. Okay, so we can see how this is starting to look. If you wanna draw on top of colors, they stack. So you can always just put in a color on top of a color and that will give you this face here. Now you can see it's facing the wrong way. I might want to uh, draw this. Let's see, put, nope, oh, that's upside down. Let's put it right here. Doop, doop, and doop and then it's facing in the right direction, okay? Your brushes can all be um, adjusted to get the look you want. You notice that right now I'm painting with a pretty soft brush, but down here you have lots of things that you can change as far as like how um, fuzzy the edges are, how uh, sharp they are. We can change this around. Let's take one of these. See, I get a little bit harder edge brush there that's now like a marker. The other kind of cool thing is you can paint directly on the model. So I don't have to be in that left side window. I can paint right on top of my cube. And when I let go of my mouse, it's going to update that uh, object. Okay. So something you might try with this is like, what if I paint the whole thing yellow, 
then I get a smaller brush, like a pencil here, and I can put on the outside lines of this cube. Okay, kind of draw it like comic book style. And when you turn, you'll see that those edges follow it right along the edge. Some other options that you might want to play around with up here in the advanced area, um, you can go to stroke and you can turn on stabilized stroke. And if you have kind of a shaky hand or when you have your pen tablet, your lines are coming out wiggly, remember with stabilized stroke turned on, when you draw, the line follows smoothly behind your mouse. And so it automatically smooths out your strokes as you go. When you let go, you can see how those are crisscrossing all over the cube. So it's a pretty cool little feature. You might not always want that though, so don't forget you can go back up and uncheck it to turn it off as well, okay? So um, that's one way that you can paint directly on an object. There's lots of different brushes. Um, the other thing that you're wanna, gonna wanna see though is that each of these brushes can have a texture to it. And the way that we do that is we come down to the texture tab and right now it has no texture to it. It's just a straight brush. But if I hit new, I can change this to uh, a type of texture. And I'm gonna find that by just clicking right on that little button. Uh, I don't have a texture, so I'm gonna change it to one of these textures here. Let's try wood. And you can see it's gonna create some stripes there. I can change these up if I want rings or bands or noise. And then I can adjust the size if I want to get more like wood grain. The amount of turbulence changes up how wavy it is. Okay, so let's take that brush. I'm gonna come back over, make my brush a little bit bigger so you can see this. And now when I paint, let's go. grab a color. So I'm going to go back to my tool settings right here at the top. And let's make this brighter. We'll pick like an orange. And when I click now, it actually paints a wood grain texture. Looks pretty awful if you just move it around because it's basically just dupl duplicating the brush. But for something like this, I could tap and you see how that will add texture to the surface. Uh, and if it's still not looking the way you want, you can always go back to this little texture tab and change the size and paint some more, okay? So lots of different options there. Wood is just one of the textures, but there are things like noise and musgrave textures for things like rust. Um, you can build up some pretty cool effects with this a little bit at a time. All right, I hope that's helpful. Uh, in the next part of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it for an even more complex object. This is a hamburger that I modeled using some cylinders that were squished down and rounded off. If I go into edit mode, you can see their geometry is pretty simple. There's a big flat face on top. Lots of uh, polygons are on the outside. Things like the cloth are gonna be more complicated because they have even more geometry than the one before, but this is a pretty good example to use. So let's uh, take a look at this hamburger bun, and I'm gonna select it, and then I'm gonna go up to texture paint. Just like we did with the cube, you can see your object on one side, and you can see its mesh over here. Now yeah, something's not to... quite right with this mesh. Uh, when I, before I can start painting on it, I need to unwrap it. So we're gonna go up to this window and we're gonna to go to object mode. We're gonna select that bottom, tab into edit mode, A to select all, and U to unwrap it, okay? And I'm, I like to use this smart UV. I'm just gonna press that, hit unwrap, and that will create a clean mesh for the bottom of this. Now, we can't see any of uh, the thing to paint on over here yet. Let's go back to object mode and we'll switch into texture paint. And remember, we don't have a material on this yet until we add one to this texture slot. So let's make a new material and we'll give it a base color. And I'm gonna pick something kind of hamburger bunish, kind of like a toasted brown here, maybe a little bit darker and add it. And you can see that that has painted the bottom of the bun. It's unwrapped the bun here so that we can see all the different sides of it. And if I want to paint on this, I can just go over to my tool, 
Let's grab a little bit lighter colored tan here. And I'll bring this into texture paint as well. Where's my tools here? Paint, there we go. Here's my paintbrush. I'm gonna go larger so I can get a big part of this. And I'm just gonna paint in, you know, kind of the soft part of the bun on the bottom where it's not quite as toasty. If I rotate, you can see that that's transferring through onto my hamburger down below. Let's do the same thing with the top bun. Okay, I'm gonna go into object mode. I'm gonna grab that top bun. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit, A to select all, and U to unwrap it. Now that it's been unwrapped, let's go to texture paint mode, and we're gonna give it a new texture slot. We'll give it a base color. I'm gonna use that same brown that I used before. And if I look at my materials, let's try that again. Add a base color. Let's make this toasty brown color again. And click add. That will apply it to that top bun. And over here you can see the UV map of what it looks like. Okay. Now let's give it some sesame seeds. I'm gonna make the radius a lot smaller here. I'll come over to my tool settings. And in here, I can kind of play around with the tool that I'm painting with. That's good, radius down to like 19 or so. And then I can start painting. Let's just go a little bit smaller there. I'll put a few different sesame seeds. There you can, you can see them popping up on the top of the hamburger bun as I add these in. So it's kind of cool that you can see it appear in live time, or if I wanted to, I could just come in with my pen tablet and I can rotate around this bun and paint directly onto the surface. Okay, very, very cool. Uh, let's try one more here. We're gonna go texture paint, object mode. Let's grab the patty, go back to texture paint, open up the slots, add a new material, and let's call this one. We're gonna make this like a hamburger. It'll be pretty dark, sort of a very, very dark brown. And let's make that our base color, okay? Now that looks pretty slick for a hamburger. I wanna give it some texture. So with the brush that I'm about to use here, I'm going to uh, pick a lighter color brown. And I want to make sure that this one has a texture on it. So I'm going to click new and then click this little button right here to open up my texture tab. Let's add a texture from up here, the type we want to use. Let's try marble might work for it. That looks pretty good. We can play around with the size. I want to get something that looks kind of like grill marks. maybe a little bit of turbulence and then I'm gonna make my brush a lot bigger on this one so I can just tap 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 and you can see it's starting to paint that onto that burger now my texture looks pretty stretched because I forgot to unwrap this so let's go back to object mode tab into edit a to select all U to unwrap and that's giving me a much better result there. So I can actually see that material painted around on the bottom of the burger, okay? So cool, two different ways that you can paint on simple objects or more complex objects. Um, don't forget you can also add images in here. Uh, if I wanted to put a logo or uh, a sign that I've created in Photoshop onto my material, one of these textures is actually an image and you can go select any photo from your computer and drop it right in there. So I could just go open, let's see what I have in my downloads. Uh, let's use the Slow Tiger, pop that on and it now becomes a texture that can be painted right onto the object. Okay, pretty weird. All right, good luck, have some fun, experiment with that and we'll try some more stuff soon.